Ho, ho, ho. Boys, it's almost Christmas. Have y'all been good? Uh, You know it, man. You're looking good, brother. I wear this hat all over the place, and I forget it's on my head, and then people come up to me and say, nice hat, and then it takes me a second to realize what the heck they're talking about. You sound like a WWE wrestler. I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> I will not make anyone sit on my lap, though. I called my mom up the other day with that on, and she was like, yes, I've been good. She didn't know who I was because I was calling through the computer. Nice. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, what's happening to take this off? No, nah, man, you should leave it on. Well, the headphones uh, don't work that way. Santa, and so it was freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> All right. So, um, <laughs> yesterday, Jason Cole kept threatening to go to the airfield because he had to fly the Inspire 2, the only one of four in the country. And I was like, Jason, it's like, it looks terrible out there. He's like, we're going. And then, I'm eating a, a cheese sandwich, and it, I get a text, I'm at the field, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay. So Jason Cole and I went to the field yesterday, Matt. Mm -hmm. You got no sympathy because uh, me and Joe Vermillion was watching our live video making fun of us for wearing gloves. Yeah, that's, uh, that's mean Joe for you. He's pretty brutal. Jason, I wasn't going to wear my gloves, but – Without the gloves, my the hands went numb. We're, you're, you did not wear gloves because you were they flying. Got cold. That's about cold? my limit. Like 40 degrees is my limit for enjoying what I'm doing. I mean, and it's and it's hard to enjoy what you're doing at that. So I feel for the guys up north and are flying in 20 below. I mean, it's nuts. If you if you don't have the right equipment, I'll, I'll preface that, right? So if you've got the nice transmitter mitt and gloves and hand warmers and all this stuff to, to make it better it can be yeah. an okay and fun experience and it's sometimes it's pretty cool i've flown in a blizzard before off of a slope with a sailplane flying out of the car within 72 <laughs> megahertz antenna hanging out the window i mean you can find ways to do it and have fun uh, but this one was more of a you know if it was just for fun i probably wouldn't have gone but i've you know it's like the best day of the week today like the highest 30 degrees and it's blowing so, like, yesterday was the day to go out and You're I right. get, uh, inspire to footage, showing off some of the flight features, how it works. We spent about an hour and a half or so out there flying this thing around and had a blast. So, what we're going to do today, all you live viewers, um, hitting the subscribe button and like buttons. Um, we're going to show Throw some your hand of that. Up again. What? Throw your hand up again. There you go. No, you were like throwing it up. You can hit the subscribe button and the like ooh, button. Ooh, and the ooh, ooh. Hey, uh, so we're going to show you some videos from yesterday. Of uh, Jason and I did a series of things. We're going to do more, evidently, but we went through a bunch of the cool features of the uh, Inspire 2. So we're going to share that with you guys. Jason, I came back after you left. I went and got my DVR and went back out there. And yeah, it must be, be nice to live like five minutes away from the field. It is. It was. Uh, I thought, you know, if I don't do it today, I might never do it until like spring. So yeah, yeah. And it, it was fine. And I tell you what, I always have you by my side to fly or videotape or whatever. And I was like, uh, look at me out here doing my thing. Uh, I did have a spotter. One of the guys was still there, so he spotted for me. But I threw that thing in the air. I flew under the uh, what? What do you, we call that thing? The cover. The pavilion. The pavilion, not the shelter. I flew uh, under the, the shelter. Pavilion. Whatever. Tornado you shelter. Threw it. I Again? flew through it. I uh, also crashed my very end of the video, which is oh, on YouTube right now. I crashed straight into one of the stanchions. <laughs> is the plane okay? Well, it's the the camera's called Heavy Duty, so I wanted to really give that a yeah. Work out. So, yeah, I have testing. a video. We can look at the video here in a minute. That's every time we crash, we call it product testing. Yeah, well, that's, that's how it happens. The plane and the video. Matt Gunn, have you been flying out in the icy snow cold? I saw you were driving your badass truck. Yeah, that was fun. But no, I, I just wanted, before I go into that, I wanted to uh, expand on what you were saying, which is you told me uh, a wise piece of advice when I first came on board, and that was... There's to, a lot of women out there. Is that yeah, there's mean? a lot of women, a lot of fish in the <laughs> sea. That's other advice that we, we shared with each other. Um, don't fly an airplane without getting it on video. Like, Ever. The maiden video, if you were in this industry and you have to review airplanes and and things like that one of the worst things you can do is to write back well the worst thing you can do is crash it 
The second worst thing is to write whoever sent it to you and say, I need another one. So your best bet is to try to get it all in the first take. Don't go maidening an airplane that you're going to do a review on without getting it on video. And I try to live by that, but yeah, it doesn't happen every time. That's, that's our tip of the day. Yeah. So the, the weather here is, is uh, a balmy eight. And Ooh, man, that's um, terrible. yeah, it's close to that temperature where you can throw a pot of boiling water in the air and it turns into a cloud. I think that's actually negative 30. But anyway, eight degrees is cold enough, and I hate it. So I went out this morning, took my son to daycare, was coming back, and the road, everyone was doing five miles an hour. None of the snow plows could keep up. They put down the salt. The, the snow just laughed at it and laid down on top of the salt. So there's, like, uh, just snow all over the roads. Nobody can see any of the, of the divider yeah. lines. Everyone just makes their own path. Two lane, Four-lane roads become two. And here I am passing people on the berm in the snow banks and four wheel drive. And people oh, are like, who is this guy? So anyway, I go and find a parking lot, start cutting donuts and, and having fun <laughs> in four wheel drive. I'm amazed at how difficult it is to take my truck and to make it so it doesn't have traction control. It's all uh, controlled electronically. So I have to push a button. I have to push it again and hold it for three seconds. Two lights come on the dash. Then you hold it again. The lights go out, and then you no longer have traction control, and you can spin all you want. Otherwise, it applies brakes to the wheel that's slipping and puts power to the wheel that's not. So, well, Mr. Mr. Matt, th going, you blew it, buddy. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because you should have took your Mavic with you, put it on active track on your car, inside the vehicle, do the donuts while the Mavic is filming you. I've thought why about Why did that, that not happen? I Come thought on. about that. Uh, I need to make that happen. I actually flew the Mavic in 20-degree weather the day before yesterday, and it flew great. No problems at all. They have this new crazy firmware. Jason, I don't know if you've flown the Mavic in a few, but they've updated the firmware, and now it warns you when there's excessive wind. I haven't updated yet. Thank it, you. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it because you get these wind warnings every five seconds now in wind that is otherwise uh, easy to fly in. So I, I have flown the Mavic in uh, 25 mile an hour gusts. No problem at all. It, it takes a little bit to get back, but it's easy to fly. No problem. Well, this thing goes off in 10 mile an hour gusts, 12 mile an hour gusts. And so I, the entire flight, I'm getting this little red pop-up that says excessive wind warning, danger, danger, Will Robinson. And I'm like, what? The heck it's fine yeah it's fine but yeah. no, it keeps going up so well, they've been pumping out updates pretty regularly so i expect that to get fixed soon hopefully but i hear you i'm gonna active track myself spinning donuts in the snow soon and if i roll the truck over i have it on video for posterity <laughs> you can show the insurance company here's what happened oh gosh that'd be bad <laughs> jason Yikes. let's see some videos man let's all right get the let good me stuff. see if i can make this happen there's only one i only have four videos done and there's only one that would really show anything cool so that's the only one i'm going to show but all right you know we have an asu in savannah where i'm from armstrong atlantic state university there's several asus yeah bonus points anybody in the comments that knows what this asu is and uh, this somebody, is like, somebody's uh, got to do something. auburn alabama this is like um, that, green, that game green. show. Um, whose line is it anyway? The the points don't matter, but you'll get bonus points. Oh, get yeah. it. All right, let Clive me. Clive Barker. Okay, screen share. Haven't done this in a while. There it is. Okay. Getting rusty, Ben. Application window. Bam. All right, can y'all see that? Uh, yeah. Just in time our, for some live viewers. I Arizona State beautiful. University is incorrect, Joey. Wrong. All right. Keep trying, guys. Keep trying. Here's the video. I'm going to have to turn the volume down because it's playing in my ears. There we go. All right. So that was the Arsene Group's <laughs> intro. That's all, got, That's all I've got so far edited. Yeah, that was, that was great. All right. So here's me on a cold 40 degree hey, day. Hey, everybody. I'm Jason. I want to show you. <laughs> yeah. So like I like UPS how man. my iPad mini case matches the color perfectly of the transmitter in Inspire 2. Who's the wonderful camera operator? <laughs> it's Jim T. Hey, Jim T. how's Graham? my video looking? This this uh, this iteration. You're a little oh, shaky. You're a little shaky there, but and it's probably it's not playing back at full. Uh, 
oh, yeah. frames per second okay. on your screen, so it's going to look weird. But it is. Um, it's a little shaky. What I want to show you guys, this is a feature called Quick Spin. So the Inspire uh, gimbal, the X4S, the X5S, they aren't 360 degree continuous rotation gimbals. So, so what they did to get around to that was enable this feature called Quick Spin, and that's me explaining it right there on camera. But what happens is, is as you pan the camera around, once you approach that 360 degree hard limit, uh, it will rotate the aircraft aggressively, uh, and then the pan will keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah, as you can see right there. So that was aggressive. And that was the aggressive part handling. is, is the pan. You can pan continuously 360 degrees, and every time you hit that point, the copter will do a little whirly do spin, and you can keep painting, and you'd never see it in the footage. It looks exactly like you were just doing a 360 continuous Whoa. rotation pan so it is amazing so here we go you're lifting i'm gonna pop in a uh, picture in picture window here so that's the actual view from the x5s doesn't it look like it's doing the karate kid crane yeah. <laughs> it does it's doing the karate kick it's so evil so here we go we're, we're 180 coming over 270 and as soon as we get to about there sure -wapa. you gotta spin. be joking me man and you can't see it move at all in the in the the actual video that you're recording. I'm, I'm watching the video this time. Okay. Yeah, so here it comes again. Watch I think the upper right hand corner. It, but, and and it, so it gets better, right? So does it beautiful. All right. It gets even better, guys, because you can do this while flying forward, backwards, sideways, and it will keep, keep the flight path. Uh, it basically is like orientation control, right? So you can just press forward here like I'm going to do. We're going to start plowing out towards the field. And uh, I'm going to rotate the camera manually here. And then as I approach, it rotates the copter 360 degrees while continuing the forward flight path at the same speed. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> it should make that sound effect. <laughs> hey, how are you rotating the camera? Um, on the second transmitter or the same? No, I'm doing it on the, the single operator, the main transmitter. You can control pan and tilt. Uh, with, with what? Uh, you hit the C1 button, and yeah. then the the uh, sliders, the, the wheel will control uh, pan. Oh uh, yeah! Right off the C1 button, it controls. Here it comes. Watch all. There it is. So you can do either or. You can't do both at the same time as a single operator. Now that is buttery. Smooth. So that's that video. Very cool. I'm gonna stop sharing now, and we're back to me. Beautiful face. Did anybody guess the hat yet? I'm curious. Appalachian State. He got it that time. Nice. In Boone, North Carolina. Boone, you're a Boone boy, ain't you? You got it. So what do you guys think about the quick spin? Isn't that not the craziest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I'm, I'm floored. I you know, I read great. about it, and then when I was out doing my test flights, um, Neil came over, and we were flying outside my house, and he was we were doing two two camera operations set up, so he was controlling the camera and panning around. I had forgotten all about this, and he was rotating, and I was sitting there, and all of a sudden it just spins, and I'm thinking, what the heck just happened? I'm out of control. And then I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. And then we had to play with it and do it probably 20 more times just to laugh because it was pretty crazy. That is pretty neat. I, I, I wonder if that's a firmware that the Inspire 1 could do. Probably not considering the processing power that would be needed for that. Yeah, I don't know. But that is pretty stinking cool, but – it's still scary, man. The first time, at least that you that you're going. I can imagine like flying through and like a really tight space on a shoot, and your camera operator guys panning around, and all of a sudden that happens to you, man. You just freak the heck out on that one. I'd say so. But it's good to know about it. So I've so got, how you liking this rig, man? I love this rig. So I've got like seven videos. Um, four of them are edited so far that cover various features like that. So we do one where I pull it out of the box. We you know, basically set it up like you would at the field, get it in the air and show how stable it is. That was one video. Uh, we talk about the, um, the dual camera feeds, how you've got the main camera view and also a picture in picture view of the FPV cam. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really the first time on anything like this that you can have simultaneous video feeds um, to be able to see what the camera operator is doing with the camera while you can see where the aircraft's going. That's the first time that's done available production wise, right? I mean, people have been doing that forever with uh, modifying, putting uh, 5.8 systems on Inspire ones and all that stuff. So it's cool to have it built in house here. We did one on, I flew in the various modes, AP and S, uh, showed how fast it was. I think we got up to like 50 something mile an hour at the field in Addy and sport mode. It's pretty I wanna, crazy. 
I want to add how cool it sounds, man. It is super quiet, but when you really get on it, it growls like a damn muscle car. It's just like, yeah. When you come blasting by and try to turn and bank, those props just cavitate, and it sounds sounds pretty impressive. We did the obstacle avoidance, and uh, we did realize that Jim T's obstacle avoidance works as well as the Mavics or the uh, Inspire (laughs) Twos. He's he's flying it right at us, and the same time it decided to stop is the exact same time that I decided to flinch. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah, we, we I got to see off school avoided. Uh, I did the Spotlight Pro, the Active Track, the Tap Fly, Tripod Mode. Tripod Mode is great, guys, for uh, if you need to do some really, really super smooth, cinematic slow flight cinematic shots. Like It's great for that. And then uh, Smart Return Home and Land, which is pretty cool. I haven't, I haven't got to test like the Smart features of smart return to home and land, but uh, it supposedly will uh, go out and then it can retrace its steps. If it loses the transmitter signal, I don't really have a way to test that without turning the radio off. And I'm not going to do that, but so it's supposed to be able to retrace its flight path and then require the signal and you can keep flying or let it keep coming back, but, and avoid obstacles on the way and all that stuff. So it's a pretty safe aircraft. Um, what I don't like a couple things. I mean, so the video feed for the FPV cam is low resolution. It's very similar to an analog. It's basically digital analog. <laughs> so it's low resolution and it's a little bit of lag coming through from the digital transmission. Um, as accurate as an analog 5.8 system that we might be used to flying from a first person perspective. And the details just aren't quite there and you can't make it full screen. So that view um, you can blow it up a little bit bigger in the corner and then you can make mm-hmm. it centered, but it's still not full screen. And it, so on the one time when Neil and I went out to, to really try to do some video work with it, um, I had a difficult time, you know, seeing the trees, especially trees without leaves on them. Oh uh, yeah. To feel comfortable flying close to them without, you know, visually line of sighting. I, I couldn't trust that FPV system fully um, like I can with maybe some other stuff, but, so that's really one thing, but the other thing is I think the advanced flight features are really cool. Active Track, Spotlight Pro, all this stuff is great for if you have to be a single operator and still get pretty cool looking dynamic shots, it's going to help you do that, but it's not perfect. You have to have the right lighting, the right contrast. Everything's got to align perfectly for it to work as well as a dual camera operator, you know. I suggest just getting a good camera operator. An RC guy is going to be great at it. Uh, get somebody who knows what they're doing. Be a dual operator setup if you're doing anything really high-end commercial work. That's really what you need the Inspire 2 for. So I just don't see if you're a single operator, get a Phantom 4 Pro. You don't need an Inspire 2 if that's all you're ever going to do. Yeah. Um, I don't think you can take advantage of the extra high-end camera stuff and still accomplish high-end shots. Uh, as a single operator. Now, some people can do it and prove me wrong, but on a general rule of thumb, it's not going to be as good as what a human controller can do. Uh, yeah, and it really takes your um, concentration away from flying the aircraft. That's what yeah. I found was the hardest part is is trying to uh, fly the airplane and fly the gimbal at the same time and not slam into something. And then you're putting yourself, your machines, and uh, – you know, other people in, at danger. So you're right. Unless you're doing a straight on shot that doesn't require any crazy camera work, two two operators is always better than one. Yeah, for sure. And then you can't even pan and tilt at the same time with the Inspire 2. You can do either or. <laughs> Man, these one. batteries look like magazines for a AR. Yeah. There you go. Huh. Yeah, those, those things nice. are awesome. I mean, everything, like when you open it up and you, you're kind of touching everything, I don't know how you know, many people have been around high end like production equipment, but it, it matches, right. It actually blends right in, in a production environment. It's got the same feel and look as, is if you pulled a red camera out of its, you know, rental package, it's just, it just feels like that. Like it's high end, it's robust, it's going to work. It's not going to be finicky and fail. Um, you know, so that's, that's really good to see. And while Jason, it costs, the hand model. while it, while it costs <laughs> 6,000 bucks, Comparatively speaking, uh, in this in that industry, six thousand is nothing. No, yeah, I mean it's going to be. You know, I think the closest thing you could compare it to would be 
you know, maybe the DJI S900 with some other stuff with the GH4 yeah. and Zen Moose. But I mean, the the only other thing close to that is like the Alta, um, you know, from FreeFly. But that's a, a whole nother level. It's a lot more money. Yeah. But you know, you're able to lift Reds and Re's and these much more cinema quality cameras um, that even blow away the X5S as good as it is. Yep. Um, you know, but it's a it's a completely different class, much heavier, much larger much more gear. I was amazed. That was one thing. So my normal uh, kind of videography work, I use an S900 uh, with the HD downlink from the Connex system. Um, we've carried this giant Pelican carry-on size case with like uh, 246, 810, like 12 giant 6S 10,000 milliamp hour battery packs. I've got to carry a monitor for the camera operator. I fill my car up with all this gear. And when I, we went to do it with the Inspire, it was one <laughs> one box, <laughs> and that had everything that we needed. And I was like, "This is amazing!" You know. What's your camera that you use when you are using the uh, Panasonic? The uh, yeah, the GH4. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look at that! You're like, kung, kung, kung. like a little stalk eyes on it. Looks like a praying mantis. It's yeah. so organic looking. I think. Yeah, it is. It's cool. Hey, we have a question from Mike Winch. Let me uh, stop sharing and I got read you. it. Mike asks, and this is not related to the Inspire. He says, what would you set the alarm for if you use 2,600 KV motors on a race quad? <laughs> I don't want to puff my lipos. I've named one of them Jill, and the other one is named <laughs> Jeanette, and I'm very fond of them. 3.8 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's it's the motor the the motors don't really matter. It's the battery voltage, right? So I you can, can use the twenty three fifties, twenty six. I mean, it doesn't matter the the kV of the motors. It, it's more important for the batteries, and it's more critical on high discharge rate batteries and high voltage batteries. So mm -hmm. your Mike. high discharge rate batteries uh, have a little bit less of a margin of error for getting over uh, discharged. So you might want to go. 3.6, 3.7. Um, if it's a lower C, you know, a 30C, 35C battery, you can go down to like 3.3, 3.4. He's running a 4S 1570C. Yeah, so 70C, you definitely want to be three and a half and above. So whatever you feel comfortable. It's your batteries. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're just going to shorten their uh, overall pack life. Um by over discharging, but you can go down to 2.7 volts per cell with them under load and they're not going to be, you know, damaged to the point you kill them. Uh, they're still going to work, but you're going to, you're going to hurt them. So they, their overall pack life is going to be shorter. You might not get many cycles out of that pack as you normally would. So it's whatever you feel comfortable with. I know they're not cheap. It's, you've got, no, an investment. you may have 15 to 20 packs or depending on how you know, invested you are into it and you want to take care of them. So, does it matter it, if you get an extra yeah. 30 seconds of flight or if your batteries last longer? It's, it's Set it for uh, three and a half, land, see what you got left on it. And then you can bump it up 10 seconds. You know, you, you want – I always thought uh, when I first got into the, the – um, I mean, No, he's talking lights. minutes. He's talking minutes there. So I was talking battery voltage. That's what I'm – oh, I'm cell. talking about minutes. Yeah, I'm talking three and a half volts per cell. For the battery yeah. pack, because uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. what do you think that is minutes wise? Like uh, under four minutes? It's it depends. I mean, it's every flight is different. The 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 timing method isn't reliable as a voltage monitoring because that that you might fly it really hard and and wear the battery out in three minutes. Some of these things well, are super high and stuff going in two minutes. I mean, are you putting it on a, a I mean, how are you monitoring voltage when you're flying? Oh, it's done the through the uh, the flight board. Okay. You, especially so, these guys that run uh, Tyrannus, you know, they're and like I could do it with my Jetty, but um, they're get they're getting cell val battery voltage, all this stuff through telemetry data. But don't you hit? Uh, doesn't it sag just a little bit? Even the high C pack start sagging, and then you're gonna hit your low voltage um, lights before it's time. Not necessarily. They sag off the the high end, but mm -hmm. that, that three and a half, that's pretty low. They're not gonna sag that low. Maybe in a you know a hard punch or something. Um, if you descending and then you just punch it and it's got a lot of static load there for a second, you might trip it, but it goes away once the voltage bounces back. So it's just a, just a good way to keep tabs of things and what's happening. 
I totally thought he was talking about minutes. And I'm like, yeah, set it for 3.8 or 3.7, which is like nominal pack voltage. <laughs> yeah. A lot of these, a lot but, uh, of the serious uh, racers and freestyle guys do use a timer and they just go hard out for two, two and a half minutes mm -hmm. on this high, crazy, powerful stuff. You know, you're just wearing things out. I, it's funny how the batteries have actually become the limiting factor in, in uh, our speed and power that we're getting out of these things because you can definitely stress the battery it used to be like a 1000 milliamp hour battery was was all you ever needed you can get five minutes of flight out of that now like 1300s don't cut it and people are going to 16s and 18s um because it's just the, the motors and the props and everything's just drawing so much current it's pretty nuts so we have a question which is a great one for this time of year and maybe it's obvious for you too but the question is, what RC product would you ask for if you could get anything under your tree? Ooh, blade now, and dog tricks. <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start out. I'm going to say I, the one airplane I really want, which is totally obtainable, I could order it right now, is the Bixler 3. Because I want landing gear, I want a rudder, ailerons, and a spacious cargo area for uh, whatever it is I want to stick in that uh, cockpit area. Yeah, I got one sitting right over here. Flies like a dream. Matt Gunn, what would you what'd you say you wanted under your Christmas tree if Santa brought you something? Well, if I didn't already have a tiny whoop, I'd want a blade in Ductrix FPV because I dig that little craft a lot. It is great for the winter. It's great for inside. And uh, it's it makes setting up a course in, in, a, in a house. I just love exploring a house in places that you would never think you could explore, like between the television and and the wall like you know that's like becomes a path that you can shoot through and uh areas of the house where you're kicking up dust bunnies as you fly on underneath the you know you go like literally through the top of the lamp lampshade and back down love it man I'd, I'd be all over that now if it were an airplane uh i do like the um the timber i think the timber is a really cool aircraft i'm going all horizon hobby on this one guys what about you, Jason Cole? Well, it's not just because I'm wearing a Jetty Duplex uh, shirt today, but I would member. I would want the uh, DS24, the color screen. Yeah. Uh, DS24, so much money, but it's amazing, and I love my 14, but the 24 with the color display, it's just got that cool factor, man. What about so, you, Jim T? Well, I want that Bixler as a. Oh, you already said that. Okay, give me something else. One well, check thing. this out. Um, so here's oh, the Inductrix FPV. hate you. I have thoroughly <laughs> tested it. My goal today is to finish the review in case anyone out there is waiting on it. So here's what I did. I'm going to cut to my video here, and uh, I'm going to show you. I put together the ultimate FPV uh, package for the Inductrix. That thing looks like Despicable Me, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, right? Well, I've seen them make it that way. So here I am, blah, ahead, blah, blah. Right. Go ahead. Hey, y'all, Jim T. Graham, rcgroups.com, the world's largest and most active RC website. whoop -a. <laughs> Okay, so on this table, I'm going to scoot around in the video so you don't have to stay here too long, but on the table, everything that I think uh, someone would need if they wanted to get into this. So in the middle is the, the little Inductrix FPV. Then if you get the $199 version, you know, I zoom in on it, so I'm going to go ahead and look at the zoom we got to get you some studio lights in there buddy uh, well i just thought hey i'm going to shoot this in my office yeah, I, have, I, I so so there's <laughs> what there's what we used to have Look to run that. tiny antlers yeah. who, printed, who printed those for you mr mac gun made these so you have the antlers to protect your antenna and my camera gets loose but with the uh and here it comes you don't need the antlers on this everything's cased in plastic the antenna is not going to break and you don't have to solder anything nothing's going to fall off and it's all there. So there's that. And then we're going to scoot over to this. So uh, 199 you get the transmitter and this LCD screen, nice. which I have to say is 100% fine for me to FPV all over the house in. I never was like, oh, this is hard. It was perfect. Yeah. And, and yeah. I also want to say, if you go to my first uh, FPV video, I had to put all these things together. It, it's, you know, it's so easy now. So now, the one thing you might want to do, and, and I don't know if you want to mention it in the review or not, but the performance level on that stock versus the tiny whoops that we've been building, uh, it, it's not the same. So the, the ones we've been making have higher performance. Um, so you can just take the high-speed really? motors that everybody's using and put them in 
that one, and then you can kind of achieve the same. Oh, thing. so they didn't put the high speed. Motors. No, they did. They they did increase the motor size. Maybe they didn't put the exact. Yeah, it's motor. not it's not the same, but it's it's better than the stock Inductrix uh, motors. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not as good as the performance that we're getting out of the custom stuff now. But it works and it gets the job done. So and let me say also battery time. time. So if you put in those hypo motors, you're going to sacrifice some battery time. Ah, this so there's a, here's the other workaround about motor time. Uh, they found that the uh, connectors were uh, providing too much internal resistance and causing the loss of flight time. So if you change the connectors out uh, to like a micro deans or something a little bit uh, more robust, you'll, you get get the, more you'll get your flight times back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so here's the next part. If you're going to get the Inductrix, it only comes with a single battery and a USB charger. Just go ahead and let down. <laughs> uh, you can buy, there's multiple chargers like this. Uh, they're about 50 bucks or not enough to worry about. And mm -hmm. you can, and then buy yourself four packs. And Yeah, you need five total. Yeah. To have a good time. Does that one, does that charger have the correct spacing for the uh, battery connectors? Yeah, so that looks like a Star Wars because uh, set. I bought the high tech one a while back, and it yeah. has an incorrect spacing for the connectors. And while it fits, you're actually damaging your connectors. So somebody called me out on a uh, somebody called me out. We'll keep your video playing here. Somebody yeah. called me out on a on a on a news piece and that and said it wasn't a, a a micro JST. It was what's it called? It's something else. I'm gonna find. I don't remember. Yeah. I'm gonna find that because that guy was right, very right. But it's something that a lot of people don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm bonding right here, and uh, you see how there's a black screen. I did this twice now. I forgot to take the lens cap off, and I've got to <laughs> think three thousand people the day of Christmas are also going to forget to take the lens cap. And they're going to so. sit there going, why is it black screen? Right. And I'm like, where's the channel? Where's the channel? And then I realized that, uh, I, I, I won't wait for myself to do it, but I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there it is on the screen. I'll look, I put a little graphic over there. Lens cap. That is. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that's what it looks like in the LCD. And then let's say this wasn't enough. Uh, here You're, we go. You're go like ahead. Jim. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go through the house in a second. You're like, uh, hey, I want to be a real FPVer. Well, they also sell these goggles for fifty bucks, and they have magnifiers, and they have an, one set in it and another set in the box. Oh, look at that! I hit the throttle on the on the. Uh, <laughs> I flew that thing quality into my. Did it go? <laughs> <laughs> I, I said vocally that just happened. So oh, then, cool! Leave that these, in there pop right in the back they look like they're well they're made for it and then bam you are goggled up hey just to to state real quick those jason the the difference it's not jst it's a molex pico blade there you go so Whoa. it's these molex pico blades and the jst have like a, a very 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 small difference in size so small that apparently nobody uh -huh. notes it uh, uh dealers and us uh people talking about it and that's the leather airplane shop right there this is the stairway of pictures you don't know what to do with stairway to heaven baby one of those well i won't go into that oh if you could go through the dog door with it open all right here's our red a red white and black power kitchen bam who made, who made that awesome kitchen yeah flooded kitchen and then it turns into that so here comes my wife what, look at the if you can see the look on her face. Really? Okay. <laughs> there went my dog. There's a package that I shipped out. And then we're gonna fly through the lights here. Then I'm gonna shoot the top, the the hardest part of the house is coming up between the fridge and the kitchen door. Oh go, dude, go, go. <laughs> you Made can it. do it. Watch out. And then this is where I talk about the blade protectors. Boom, 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 boom. Back wall. Bam. Ba -bum -ba -bum. Oh, upside down. So then uh, we're at the end of it here. Uh, one thing I do want to show, one thing, bam, that's uh, pretty fun is ground flying. And I will yeah. put ground flying in the, in the living room quite a bit. You just leave like it on the ground it. and just drive it. Yeah, it's like a, it's like, um, what is that? 
sport that old people do where they slide the thing across the ground <laughs> and the sand at shuffleboard. Sandals. Shuffleboard. It's like shuffleboard at Sandals Resort. Hey, sandals isn't for old people. I've been there. And Michael Scott, too. So that's the Inductrix FPV, and I guarantee if you buy it, you will love it. Well, maybe I need to get one. You know what else I like is that UMX um, A10 Warthog that they have. Mm, that one's pretty sexy. nice. It sexy. is. So I guess that concludes what we want for Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. What about you guys in the comments? What are you guys looking for for this year? We're only like, man, a couple weeks away or something. I got my son his first RC car, which is funny because I have more RC cars in that area right there you can see a wheel sticking through i have that's my rc car section so i got all the cars back in there and preston who's three years old about to be four he's going to get some rc cars when he gets older but for his first i got him a little micro crawler so that's pretty cool he said dada i want something that can go in the mud in his rc because he gets on youtube and he watches youtube kids well you google rc car and it's like these two british guys playing with the slash and the traxxas uh, emacs all day long, and they just go through the mud, and they're like, oh, that is just crazy, and they just, you know, whatever, in an English accent, which I don't have, and uh, he watches that, and then he says, Dad, I want an RC car that can go in the mud, so I'm like, well, I'll get you a 124 scale crawler, it's about the same thing. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, of all the trucks I've had in that aspect, the actual AXIAL trucks are the very best crawlers out there for the dollar they're not exactly cheap but man you can you can abuse them pretty hard mm -hmm. you sure the, can hornet nz says the aj laser nice doesn't he have one says he has one coming uh mike winch wants breast implants wow yeah, that, that is everything. what you call tmi he's thinking off the charts he's really thinking out of the box yeah I have another video if you want to see it. Yeah, let's watch it. Let me find it. This is of a Horizon product. Uh, Miss Kim got on the phone. And so the, the review, well, you know what? There's not enough of the review built yet to show. So I'm going to present this. Look at that. Okay, so this is a micro FPV cam that's heavy duty. And it's dust and water and dirt resistant. So this would be something you would put on a FPV truck, Matt Guy. Yes, that is crawler-tastic. It's 25 milliwatts, which I didn't think was going to be enough. Let me hit the play button. And uh, I mounted it. <laughs> I mounted it on my on my micro Sky Hunter. Just hey, with look a at that little lid of, there. Little Velcro. And you could double stick tape it. The button right here on the back is for changing the channels. But the thing I like is that the antenna is encased and, and protected and the whole unit is, and it, it runs off your transmitter. It has resistors in there, or it has uh, the ability to uh, not uh, get signal inf interference. Mm -hmm. It's all built into the case. And you can change channels from your transmitter from an aux channel. That's got to be the slowest, most beautiful zoom I've ever seen. You're moving it like one inch a minute. I must have been talking. <laughs> Let me make this a little longer. So just to, to point out here at the field, I'll hit pause real fast when I get to it. Um, I'm using, bam, that is my dual diversity receiver, and I'm running uh, a four lobe and a, uh, I want space now. Hang on a second, guys. It's um, a helical. We got a problem with the presentation. It's showing Matt. Oh no! Not Jim somehow. Really, it's showing my ugly mug. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm watching the live feed. Whenever I switch, I always assume somebody's grabbing the present thing. So uh, that was. All right. Uh, let me. I got it. Okay. It's hot. Is it still me? No, it's it's off of it. Right, Matt, yeah, Jason. Not, yeah. Now it's now it's whoever's talking. It switches okay. to. So here's the camera mounted on the micro Sky Hunter with Velcro, and you see the little. Uh, wire coming out that's going straight to my receiver so it's all powered off the receiver no need for an extra battery which is awesome and so my question was here we go there's my dual diversity receiver i chunk it in the cold cold 39 degree weather my question was how far out does 25 milliwatts get you how far out do you think it'll go jason uh 2.3 miles <laughs> no for real how is that no, what it, you, it could it, theoretically it can go a long ways, like over a mile. I think most most people on twenty five milliwatts are lucky if they get to the other side of the field. Right. Yeah. So, no. my question was, can I get over to this far side where I usually fly to, which I did, and then the big question is 
to our right there are the uh, soccer fields, and usually I can't get past the soccer field. Mm -hmm. So we're headed over there. And then uh, I'll st I won't stay too long on this video, y'all. I won't bore you. But the, this is, uh, you might note, Matt, this is full screen. So I took, I didn't downsize it to fit the 480 size it really wants to be. Yeah. So there's where it fuzzed out, right in the middle of the soccer field. And so anyway, pretty awesome. Good low light. Looks good through your goggles, all that good stuff, right? Yeah, it looked great. So I'm going to come Can around to here. The, uh, going through the... Yeah, Shelter. let me try to find it. Check this there out. It is. Here it goes. Goes. Yep, yep. Yeah, little low there. So then I'm going to come back around and do it again. And this is where I test the heavy dutiness of the plane and of the. Uh, there was a little wind that kept blowing me out. Sure, that's what they all say. You rip it into an upright. Wow. Boom! How did the plane? How did the plane uh, go down? Nothing uh, happened. It, the Velcro came off the wood, and I stuck it back on. That's it. There wasn't even a dent in the wing, you know. That's because that thing has the mass of a feather. Yeah, exactly, and that's why small airplanes are awesome. I'll agree to that, man. So I was impressed. You could, if you wanted to, micro sky hunter this camera, and yep. that's all you need. And I'm going to try to put an on-screen display unit in there in that tiny little thing and see how it flies and we'll see how that goes. Nice. All right. I like it. That would be the other thing I'd want under my tree is a micro sky hunter. I think you really need, I, I have to say, I'm going to say it out loud right now. The reason I was having trouble shooting the hole, uh, I left that one where I missed it twice is that I didn't have a rudder to kind of push my butt end around to really line it up. So I am That's the problem with the sky hunter, no rudder. You, you can't really yaw yourself into position with it. You just gotta, you gotta bank and use your, you just elevator. gotta learn how to fly fellas. Yeah, that's all that's it. All it is, right? That is, that <laughs> is you not going, city boy. <laughs> Everyone said in my early days of learning to fly that you have to learn how to run the, someone's calling me. You have to learn how to use that rudder. And, and sure. that is, is it? Oh, I, I hung up on him. <laughs> I'll, I'll call them back when we're done. But uh, you have to learn how to use that rudder. And so, uh, Matt Gunn, Talk I, to can me. Put a, I can put at least, what if I was thinking, before I went to sleep last night, I will lay down and think about things like this because I get really crazy ideas. What if I just put a rudder on one of those, uh, one, one side of the plane? Well, technically, it'll yaw you, but it's not going to. Uh, it'll only yaw that side, though. Yeah, right. on the left side, it'll only it'll be like left. some rip in the space-time continuum where half the plane <laughs> begins to turn in a different dimension. Um, I bet I could totally do that. Yeah, I think it's going to induce some um, some possible pitch. Heck, I don't know. Do it. See what happens. But the, there's not enough room on that aircraft to mount another servo on that, on that upright back there. What if I just mounted a micro servo with two little arms that went to each side? That I was thinking. If you connected it with a really... Uh, short, uh, really small, um, something smaller than 256. So I have two, I, I have wire going from the arm to each one with single servo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a possibility. And yeah, then if you put a micro vector on that thing, then you could actually more fully utilize the micro vector because now you have a, uh, a rudder. You know, I've had so many vectors and they've either gone on a flying wing or they've gone on the sky hunter so i've never used a micro vector or even a regular vector with rudder it's huh. always been uh without i don't even know what it does that thing weighs 0.6 ounces by the way i've got it right here hey they say it's been done man you put the uh servo right at the base of the vertical stabilizer oh yeah well i'm gonna hunt it up and it's winter time i probably won't fly for a good long time so i'm gonna get this thing rocking around i really love this airplane i really really do i haven't weighed it but, hey, Jason, uh, if you got anything to trade me, I'll trade you mine for it. You can well, see it I've right there. An, see? I've got an Inspire yeah. 2 sitting here. Okay, I will trade you an Inspire 2 for this machine right here. <laughs> How do I do it? I can't get my finger over it. There it is. <laughs> I feel like a weather person. So I used to work at the – I used to literally work at the Weather Channel as a camera operator in Atlanta. And I worked with Jim Cantori and uh, – uh, Jim Stephanie Cantori. Abrams and all of them at the beginning. Jim, Jim Cantori was still pretty – 
popular, but he he had a full head of hair then. He was and then uh, this was pretty. back after I was was I was graduating college, so I needed to do an internship. So I started off as the camera operator for their on air morning show. So when this when the place would shut down and all the people would leave, it would just be me in there in front of the green screens closing everything up. So I would go and stand on screen and record myself on the Weather Channel, just keep the video, and I'd be like, "Here's your weather report for Atlanta, Georgia," and I could never get this right. I would always put the hand out the wrong way, and uh, I was so I'd send it to my wife. And I'm like, yep, I'm going kayaking down the Chattahoochee River tomorrow and blah, blah, blah. And she'd be like, oh, my God, you're on TV. I'm like, yeah, it's just me screwing around. I could probably get fired for this. So that's my story. Crazy. I got nothing. Nice. <laughs> so, Matt, what are you going to get your wife for Christmas? Oh, God, I can't talk about it. You know, like, like she watches this. Actually, hey, she how, does. You bought her that minor thing that the miners dug up from TV, and you bought that jewelry. How did that? Did you freak? Oh man, that went down really well. So we watch um, Prospectors, which hasn't been on in a while. It's a show, coincidentally, on the Weather Channel. I think uh, they bought it or something like that. But it's a, it's you know, it's a reality show about all these people in the mountains in Colorado, and they're. They're mining for aquamarine. They're mining for, uh, you know, smoky topaz and jewels. I used to and, date smoky topaz. <laughs> that chick's crazy. <laughs> so uh, well, I ended up, um, we were watching this show for so long, and there's this, uh, there's these um, these people that they follow the family called the, the Boosies, Yolanda Boosie and the other people like that. And so I wrote her and said, would you sell me something that you found that you mined? And she's like, Absolutely. So she sold me an aquamarine pennant that uh, that she mined on the show and was mound, mined on Mount Antero at the thank you Lord claim that they have of all things. So I gave that to my wife and it has a little card in it from this woman on television that she that Jessica and I watched so many times. She was like, you can kind of imagine the reaction. Oh my God. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So that went over. Pretty darn well. Yeah. What about you, Jason? What do you buy a, a, a wife <laughs> like yours? I don't want to talk about it. A segue. <laughs> oh, wait, you already have one. If, you have two segues now. I saw that picture. Yeah. Yeah, I had to have two. It was just too perfect not to have on vacation. That's and they a had a killer buy. Black Friday deal at Best Buy, so took advantage of that. Yeah, you're like, hey, honey, I bought you a Segway, and I bought myself one. So now we can go do this together. I tried that. Believe me, it didn't work. Mm, I'm getting sometimes. my wife a 1911 Colt. Boom. I don't That's believe the... that for one second. I think you yeah. do need to uh, get her to the firing range some more. I love it. <laughs> well, y'all, it's cold outside. Um, I have a few <laughs> projects I'm going to do back here during the weather i got I I need we to, all go to your mom's house man and we we do rc groups and podcasts for there for the next three months my mom would totally have us to mexico if y'all want to fly out She's i like this nothing. idea if y'all want to fly out i can probably set it up so we would have <laughs> a place to crash wouldn't that be amazing to have like a three month just Stead. mexico like workhouse workplace I could put yeah, that together. Yeah. We could have Jim Burke come down with us. We could call it the a only problem with that is if we try to have anything shipped there, model airplane wise, it's probably yeah. going to get confiscated at the border. The best <laughs> you could do is bring it on the airplane, and even then, I would not expect it to come yeah, back with you. Yeah. But there's a lot of quad pilots in her area because I see quads every night flying down the beach. Mm -hmm. We right. can help bring down some cartels or something. You never know, man. We do some surveillance work. Mm, Jason. <laughs> that ain't how you talk. You don't go down there and talk about bringing down anything. Oh, no, no, we never have. Never have. Lord. Yep. <laughs> we ain't going there. I'm going to be knocking on some wood now. <laughs> We're going to edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> Madagus Gunnicus, uh, do you have any review items on the way? Um, I don't. I'm just waiting for a break in the weather to get some more reviews done. This is the hardest part. I remember going through this sort of – uh, depression, I guess you could call it, last year at this time when I had a few review airplanes that needed to get done and there's a blizzard outside and it doesn't stop and then when it does stop, the ground is frozen solid. So I don't know if I've hit the point of no, no return before next season, 
but it may warm up. It, it's been known to. It can get up in the 40s and 50s, and then things, good things happen. So I'm not sure. You know what you can give all the viewers out there? Hello, live viewers. Thanks to everyone who watches us live. Be sure to spread the word. If you're an RC uh, nerd head like us and you know other people that are equally... Uh, nerd headed Yes, nerd. Wow, okay. Um, why don't you go on your computer that's in front of your face and find that contest we're having on RC Groups and share screen so everyone can know how to join that thing. Yeah, stand by. You just go ahead and talk for a second. So we're having a pretty cool contest. We just wrapped up a contest. Uh, Peak Model gave away an airplane on FlyingGiants.com, the world's largest giant scale website. And uh, you may or may not know, Matt Gunn and I both work that site, uh, putting up stories, we have contests, and uh, it's purely giant scale people over there. Kind of a it different. Is. Yeah, it's not exactly this. Some of those guys are on RC groups. In fact, Nash Vegas, who's on Flying Giants, flies at my field. But Matt, I didn't tell you this. He was out there the other day flying uh, Chris Henson plane and just knife edging everywhere. It was awesome. Heck yeah. So here so we here, go. Here is the Razorback contest from Force RC. Basically, what happened was I emailed uh, Force and said, hey, you should have a contest. Is there anything you want to talk about or give away? And he said, we should give this away. Yeah, I'm digging this thing, man. $399 value. It's very scale, and it's pretty new, right, Matt? Yeah, you know, there was a point where you couldn't – there was a point where no one was making the Razorback. You remember this, guys, like maybe five years ago, six years ago? The only giant or even real uh, Razorback versions of the P-47 was the uh, – was a, was a Horizon Hobby one that they discontinued. So I'm glad that there's been this resurgence of uh, Razorbacks, which is probably the coolest one in my opinion. So, uh, so anyway, the contest is called uh, Tell Us Your Call Sign, basically, and all you have to do is tell us what your call sign would be if you were flying this in the Pacific Theater or anywhere else that this uh, P-47 operated during World War II. So here we go. Tony Jughead Spicoli. Is we should change everyone's sign. username to their call sign. Oh, dude, that, that would be awesome. <laughs> I have uh, changed a uh, username only once in, in my whole history of the site have I changed a username for fun. Flack Alley Frankie. That is freaking cool. There's uh, uh, Chino Rican. And Scott, a.k.a. Smooth Cruiser. Smooth. Every time you say operator on the Inspire 2, the song Smooth Operator comes into my head. Smooth <laughs> Operator. Hey, guys, we got a request for a joke. So uh, why did the cookie go to the hospital? Why? Because he felt crummy. Dude. Yeah, where's the sound effect? There you go. I've got that a joke. Isn't this is worthy of a sound effect. <laughs> this is the worst joke I've ever heard, known, or tell to people. Have, hey, guys, have you heard about the new corduroy pillowcases that they just came out with for Christmas? No. Yeah, they're making headlines all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Now that is the good stuff. Okay, I'm going to jump off of you, uh, off the screenshot Whoa. here, Matt. <laughs> and I'm going to share something. Now, um, before I go here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, talk about myself. Many years ago, I evidently Can sold. You do it in the third person. Cue the music. <laughs> Many years ago, I sold my gaming uh, joy. I had this huge ultimate, jo uh, you know, like airplane joystick, secondary uh, D pad, or whatever they're called. I don't know, but I literally got rid of it because I didn't want to spend uh, all my time until two in the morning doing these yeah, things anymore. The story of our lives. So there's an advertiser on rcgroups.com, and the name of the uh, game is War Thunder. It's an online World War II battle game, and I have gone way out of my way never to play it. So uh, the colonel, the guy who runs it, wrote me an email, and he said, you should check out this thing, and I knew it was a bad decision, but I also knew it was winter. So it's, it's, I thought, okay, if I was going to do it, now's the time. So I download War Thunder, and I'm about to cut over to it, and two nights in a row, the first night I stayed up till one in the morning, and last night I made myself go to bed at midnight 30. Mm -hmm. so it, I hey, let's get on and let's get do some team speak and, you know, uh, flank some fools and kill some people in tanks. And I said, where do I sign up? All right. Can you all see the video? 
Yeah, let me. I see your face. Presenting. Hold on. Let me. It's your face. It's your face. Let me. Let me do this. Oh, there you go. Video. All right. So you're. It's on your face, but you took the video off. Oh, I can have it. No, it's back yeah, to your face. It. Okay, so anybody that plays this game, oh, you unpresented yourself again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm trying Dude. to get on the video. All right, present I'm gonna to present to you. There we go. Okay, now do you see the video? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so this is what it really looks like. I mean, um, no, it went off again, Jim. You know what? It's, maybe it's when I'm going full screen. All right, you how can about do now? it? Nothing. Wow, that's very strange. I won't go full screen because that's the only weird thing I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so this is what it really looks like. Gotcha. I mean, the graphics are this. Whoops. Something happened. You muted yourself. He's muted. We apologize uh -oh. for the technical difficulties. I don't know. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing anything. So. All right. You're, you're, you're rolling now, dude. We get worse from here on out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's all doing it by itself. <laughs> So anyway, this is what the uh, the airplane stuff looks like. It's just beautiful, and it doesn't cost anything to join. And uh, the other thing that I've been playing a lot of, let me find it, is it's this the tank, tank battle. The tank battle. I'm not sure why it's so. So I just went through this. Um, I went through the uh, when I signed it up, Jim. I um, went through the training thing, and is this is identical to World of Tanks. Just slightly different, but identical enough. So uh, if you've ever played World of Tanks, which a lot of people have, I know Chad at Tail Dragger, he's big into it also. I played it for a few years. Yeah. It's awesome, man. This is a great-looking game, and uh, it looks like it's going to be fun. Well, I got in there. By the end of last night, I was. they rank you after each. Uh, you go into battles, and I was ranking one to th three out of the top uh, players. And I would just, I found that I would just go in and get after it. And I want custom schemes like this. I want a full Billy Hell tank. I want to <laughs> scheme out a tank. That's where they get you, man. It's a free game until you want to do a custom scheme. Then it's twenty nine nine ninety five. Well, i am just about, I think it was two bucks on here to do what I want. So yeah. uh, it'll show you where you shoot and how you're affecting the armament and things like that. It's very cool. And once again, I'll stop presenting. Once again, these guys are uh, advertisers on RC groups, and it must work because they keep uh, every month they have another ad. They're always updating their banners, and uh, the reason I'm talking about it today is because it's a it's so good it's a problem. Yeah, gaming uh -oh. is a big problem. I have to uninstall a game after uh, playing it for a few weeks because that's all I'll do. You know, it'd be awesome though. You can have um, teams, or they don't call them teams. What do they call them, Matt? Uh, platoons, Squad. platoons. Yeah. So, so we could start out with us three, and uh, they have a I forget stream three is what they use to talk to each other on. So mm -hmm. just like now we could, and then like if we went into these tank battles together, we could uh, talk about where we're at, where we're going, what's what's going on, and that would be fun. And then if we could get a whole RC groups thing going on. Yeah, I'm down. I say we just let the website run on cruise control, and we just do this for a few days, <laughs> a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome. What do you say, man? <laughs> well, I'm I can't do it tonight, so I'm not going to get on there tonight. But uh, I will well, look I forward to my South day. Park when they play World of Warcraft. What is that? <laughs> my bathroom. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Think you guys I, have seen I, have no that. I just know about getting in the kitchen and making some pie. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, we can get some hot pockets going and. Uh, Hot pocket. We can get Caliente some hot pockets. pockets. Yeah, caliente pockets. Hot we can play trigger. some tank warfare. Oh, and it all came back around to hot trigger. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we uh, did have. We hit it. We, we made it we, through an hour of this stuff. I'm mean, Joe. Uh, we just uh, you should say, hey, put me on the podcast. We totally forgot because Matt Gunn yesterday last week said uh, we should we should do that every week. Mm-hmm. Well, man, I want to thank all of y'all. Christmas is coming. You better be good. Matt Gunn, don't cry or pout. I'm not. You know, I'm telling you why. Well, you know why. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us each week. Of course, this is now going to go out on uh, YouTube so you can watch it again over and over again. Sometimes I listen to them when I'm in the shop just to see how stupid or great we sound. You know, kind of the gauge there of where we're going with everything. Yeah, because when you listen to yourself, it's either good or bad. <laughs> 
some people can't listen to themselves. I've gotten so, used to it. I've 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 uh, conditioned myself to listen to my voice. That's good. That hey, Ed's it. online. He's in the chat. What's up, Ed? Ed, we were just talking all about the the Inspire Two, and we showed videos and the whole thing. We we're out flying it yesterday. And we decided that we weren't going to send it back. I hope that's okay. We didn't you know, think DJI would it. notice. <laughs> we'll just we'll just forget it ever left the facility. So I think this is how they're <laughs> selling all the units. They send them out and then say, "Okay, send it back," and that's how they make the sale. Yeah, I'll just send like a wad of cash instead. <laughs> so if you want to join that contest, jump over on RC Groups. It would be in the airplane section. It would. You can find it there. And uh, stay tuned. A lot of the videos you saw today will be on our YouTube channel, and that means they're all going to be in reviews on rcgroups.com, the world's largest and most active RC web one. I'm Jim T. Graham, your host. We've been hanging out with Mr. Jason Cole, ASU, and Mr. Maticus Gunicus out in the frigid uh, northern region. Yeah, it's pretty brutal up here, but I'm warm in my basement. And in your heart. Everybody, we'll see you before Christmas, but uh, ha keep having a great holiday. We'll talk to you later. I'm dreaming of a white oh boy. Christmas.